Hi there, welcome to Save Your Spot. My name is Peppy, and in this video, I have saved a spot for you to learn all about Rosa Parks. Are you ready? Good. Get comfortable, put your learning caps on, and let's get started. Rosa Louise was born in 1913 in Alabama in the US, that's more than 100 years ago. Amazing. Her mother was a teacher and her father was a carpenter, which means that he made things out of wood. When she was young, about two and a half, her parents separated, so she went to live with her grandparents on their farm together with her mother and little brother called Sylvester. Their farm was in a place called Pine Level, again in that, um, Alabama, just outside the city of Montgomery and that's where she grew up. Now in those days, remember she was born in 1913, so in the early 1900s Things were very different then. The laws weren't the same and life wasn't the same. So back then, in the US and in other countries, there were different laws for white people and different laws for black people. So there was a separation between white people and black people and this is what segregation means. But back then, things were different. Black people couldn't go to the same schools as white people. They couldn't even drink from the same water fountain. If you look here at this sign from, from back then, they couldn't even go to the same restrooms. So they could not use the same facilities. And um, that's how things were then. Rosa Parks was used to a lot of racism because of all these laws that were in place back then and as she grew older she went about her life got a job and one day on the 1st of December 1955 she had finished work as an adult now and she paid her fee to get on the bus and she sat in the section where black people were allowed to sit now then, even when you were waiting for the bus stop, there was a separate line for the white people, there was a separate line for the black people. The white people could sit on the bench, waiting for the bus. The black people weren't allowed to do that. And that was so that the white people could get on first, and the black people were left to get on last, but they all had to sit towards the back of the bus anyway. So that's what happened and Rosa, you know, waited her turn, paid her fee, got on the bus and what happened was that the, there were so many people on the bus, uh, white people on the bus, that they had filled up all the spaces for the white people. And one person told the bus driver and the bus driver stopped the bus and went to Rosa Park and told some black people to move seats to move elsewhere, further back, so that the white people could sit down. Now, Rosa Parks was sitting in the area for black people and she was asked to move for the white person to sit in her seat. And she said, no, she refused politely, but she said no, she would not move for another white person to sit. Now, remember, there are other empty seats, so the white people could go and sit elsewhere on the bus, but no, they wanted to move Rosa Parks. Her refusal to move got the bus driver very angry, and he said, if you don't move, I'm going to call the police. And she said, you know what, just call the police then. 
She was tired, not tired from work, although she must have been tired from work, I guess. But if you read her biography, she was just tired of this separation, this, in, this unfairness, and she just had had enough of it all. So she said, no, 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 I will not go to my seat. I will not move and sit elsewhere for the white person to sit in my seat. She was already sitting in the area for black people. The bus driver called the police and the police came and guess what? Yeah, that's right. They arrested her for not moving and they put her in prison. Luckily, a few of her friends were able to bail her out the next day, which means they paid money to get her out. Her and her friends started what was called the bus boycott. What that means was that all the black people refused to get on the bus, to use the bus, and they preferred to either walk to where they wanted to get to or use other means like maybe a bicycle or use other means of transport. But they boycotted the buses so they would refuse to get on the buses. 40,000 people, that's how many black people, refused to go on the bus. So you can imagine how much money the bus company lost. And this was enough to get America and the Congress and the United States to start listening to people. In the meantime, there were protests, uh, people you know, talking about this isn't right, this isn't fair, what about equality, we're people too, we should have the same rights. And in the end, they listened. And there was a change in the law in 1956, which was a year after that stopped bus segregation, which was a victory for Rosa Parks. It was a great time and the beginning of many, many changes of such laws that have led to where we are today. Because of Rosa Parks, standing up for her rights as a human being, for her to have equal rights to somebody else, to sit wherever she wants on her bus, just from that simple action of saying no to unfairness and inequality, we today are where we are now. Now, don't think that this happened magically. Many people were against it. It took a very long time to change. Rosa Parks died at the age of 92 years old in 2005. She died of natural causes because 92 is quite old. <laughs> I wish I lived until then. And um, today, people still talk about her, this amazing woman, and her determination to start moving things in the right way for the world. I hope you now know a little bit more about Rosa Parks. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video for more time. Bye.